What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 best WWE Intercontinental Championship matches of all time by none other than Parts for Unknown. This should be a good one. We just checked out uh, his list of the best uh, WWE uh, Championship matches. So it's only fitting to check out the best Intercontinental Championship matches. I already know Gunther versus uh, Sheamus has to be in that list right like what are we talking about like gunther versus sheamus at clash of the castle what are we talking about easily one of the best matches from last year like what 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 gunther's intercontinental championship reign title reign has been one of the best wwe has ever seen and i love it so we're gonna check this out see what other ones are on this list Appreciate all love and support, man. We're going to get right into this video, man. Serious question. Is the Intercontinental Championship my favorite championship in wrestling history? I don't know how I can expect you to answer that because last time I checked, you're not me and you never will be. Despite WWE's best efforts to make the title irrelevant during the dark days of the 2010s, yeah. I think it might just be my favorite title. It's the Maximum Effort Championship, a platform for brass ring-grabbing mid-carders. And unlike the WWE Championship matches, which WWE seem to overcomplicate with sports entertainment, bollocks more often than not intercontinental matches tended to be allowed to you know finish honestly yeah. looking back over this list i've gone back and re-watched these matches maybe more than any other top matches list this right here this is a good stuff i'm adam hailing from parts for known and here are 10 best intercontinental title matches ever all right stop me if you've heard this one before it's a late night netflix hasn't got anything you fancy you've already right, watched let's get Raw, right into this one man Number 10, AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan, SmackDown 2020. Ooh. Do you have any idea? Do you have any f***ing idea how good a pandemic match has to be to make it onto one of these lists? And not yeah. even the part of the pandemic where they brought a bunch of TVs in and piped in crowd noise. The part where they had a bunch of random developmental talent being instructed to cheer at gunpoint. This match managed to be better <laughs> than both matches where they wrestled for the WWE title in front of people. Such is the magic of the Intercontinental title, I suppose. I forgot it's all about this one. I'm not gonna lie to you. bit of technical wizardry that deserves to be seen even if you hate the nether realm that was crowdless covid wrestling the counter of that psycho knee into a stars clash is just peachy and it's great that before brian left the company that at least one of his matches with the phenomenal one lived up to both men's full potential number nine bret mm. hart versus mr perfect SummerSlam 1991. this is an older match and may lack some of the bells and whistles of the modern era but it's really buoyed by a stellar hulkamania era crowd at SummerSlam 91 bret hart began his ascendancy to single superstardom by knocking off mr perfect for the ic title and compared to slow moving titans of the main event scene the main event of this pay-per-view by the way features sergeant slaughter <laughs> and dying <laughs> chic <laughs> me compared to those this contest between the two best tech boys on the roster was able before my time fresh though. air it's just the extra levels of care and thought that fill in the gaps of bret hart matches no one just sits in the rest hold they claw at hair and they try to fight their way out and that gets the crowd more invested no one just runs the ropes they reverse them by grabbing limbs or slamming their sternums into turnbuckles making every twist and turn seem significant and keep the crowd and the commentators invested and this match is called by roddy piper and bobby heenan and Gorilla Monsoon as well, but mostly those two. So it's worth the price of the <laughs> fast and smooth. It's a masterpiece of subtlety, marred only slightly by Hebner being a little too quick to ring the bell after a blistering transition into the sharpshooter. Slow down, Hebs. Number eight, Sean <laughs> Michaels Hibs. versus Razor Ramon, WrestleMania 10. It of might seem like in the context of ladder matches of today, the IC ladder matches at Mania's 31 and 32 have more spots in two minutes than this whole match, probably. But back in the day, mm -hmm. this was all bells and all whistles, and it blew people's tiny minds. A classic in every sense of the word. This match still holds up because A, the crowd reactions are a novelty all of themselves, mm -hmm. and B, the lack of spots actually makes the match seem way more dangerous than what ladder matches have sort of become a conveyor belt of yep. spots. And C, there's actually way more match than most ladder matches with the two clickmates executing really solid technical wrestling before the ladder even comes into play so that when it does, it's even more impactful. Helps when you I figured this was gonna, it had to be on the list. <laughs> it's, it's, this match is iconic for not only just being a good intercontinental uh championship match but for the fact of you know them really the you know introducing ladders into such a match like this you know like so many i mean shit where would the ladder match be if it wasn't for this one right here 
you know, where would the modern ladder match stand? You know what I'm saying? I'm sure maybe at some point someone would be like, hey, let's bring some ladders into the mix. You know what I'm saying? Into a wrestling ring. I'm sure it would happen. But the influence that this match had transcended, you know, time. <laughs> As you can say, like people have been inspired by this ladder match, you know, to have their own ladder matches at the crib and become a wrestler. <laughs> so have Shawn Michaels, one of the best bumpers of all time, bouncing around the steel like a man on fire. Also, even in all the ladder matches that there's been, this is still one of the best closing sequences with Shawn getting tangled in the ropes and Razor desperately tearing the belts down as Shawn lunged for the ladder. It's f***ing brilliant. Number seven, Randy Orton versus Cactus Jack, Backlash 2004. Ooh. Bloody hell, though. With one countered RKO, Randy Orton became a man that day, picking yep. contacts out of his hand in a spot that still sends a shiver all the way down the <laughs> Spine. Randy Orton was doing his legend killer thing on his career defining IC title. I forgot that was for the IC title. I forgot that was for the IC title, bro. <laughs> he went through hell and back just for the IC title. Oh my title run as part of evolution where he ran afoul of history's craziest santa claus mick foley who did evolved into cactus jack to do for randall what he did for paul back at the royal rumble 2000 yeah. i.e take a smarmy pretty boy and send them through the fire turning him into a legit main eventer it's an insane parade of spots with almost no let up could have done without my dad eric bischoff coming out to briefly lecture mick about fire safety yeah other than that it's a perpetual nightmare of barbed wire stage dives and blood just picturing cactus staying up all night making that barbed wire oh bed gosh, he's got stevie bro. nicks on in the background getting frustrated because the ends of the gaffer tape keep sticking together between trips orton and later edge mick foley is the patron saint of carving top guys out of solid suffering Number six, Macho Man Randy Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, WrestleMania 3. Some wrestlers prefer to call it in the ring, and some, like Randy Savage, map out matches to the millisecond. And hey, when the end result is the best match in the first decade of WrestleMania, fair play. Even by modern standards, this match is a firecracker. Lightning quick, precisely timed. Heard so many great things about this match, too. Sorry. Surprisingly barbaric feud of Macho nearly killing Steamboat's career with that bell shot to the throat. Also, when Steamboat finally rolls up Savage to win the title, it's an absolutely monumental victory because Macho Man had held the title for over a full year at this point. I mean, sure, George the Animal Steel was also there because why wouldn't Phil Mitchell's fluffy testicle be at ringside for one of the most vaunted technical displays in the history of the sport? It's a match featuring two of the best in the world at the time, acting as a perfect combination of Southern technical focus and WWE's yeah, foreign I mean, object narrative there too. shenanigans. Number five, Rey Mysterio versus Chris Jericho, The oh. Bash 2009. Risky business of the story of your match being someone trying to remove Rey Mysterio's mask because if yeah. that thing breaks, could really dunk a match. See also Rey and Eddie's match at WrestleMania 21. But this match of The Bash, putting both Mysterio's mask and Chris Jericho's icy title up for grabs was unbelievably uh -huh. good. It's just perfect pro wrestling. Two incredibly talented workers with excellent chemistry, high stakes, and really strong personalities to cut the graps with enough silly storytelling to keep the fans super invested. Chris Jericho is special Especially is a glorious prick in this yeah, match. Bro. Desperately trying to rip them up. Bro, Chris, this version of Chris Jericho, man, with the, the soccer mom <laughs> haircut, yo. This version of Chris Jericho, man. He, bro, he was such a good heel. He was such a good heel. That, man, <laughs> I can, all I can do is just look fondly back on his heel run at this time. With the soccer mom haircut. Uh, and him wearing the suits and stuff. Ah, oh, yeah, he was good, bro. Mask off Ray's face. Like, he doesn't even give a damn about how merchandisable they are. You can tell it's a feud ender as well, with both men pulling out counter after counter after counter to each other's big moves, especially in the last five minutes of the match, which sees the crowd bite for everything before the big magic <coughs> trick at the end. Ray <clears throat> is so often portrayed as a simple Mike baby check. face. Right, just make sure my mic good. Smarting Chris Jericho of all mm -hmm. people with a mask within a mask is a lovely little touch for his character. That was actually pretty, that was actually pretty smart. Like, what? A baby face thinking? Using its brain? Using the baby face actually being smart? What? Awesome match, this. 
Number four, Chris Jericho <laughs> versus Chris Benoit, Royal Rumble 2001. I Another might have one. my nostalgia Chris glasses Jericho stapled here. firmly to my head, you know, like all wrestling fans. But this is still one of the best ladder matches of all time. Ask me to name favorite spots from ladder matches, and half the ones that come to mind are still ones from this match at the Royal Rumble 2001. The walls of Jericho on top of the yeah. ladder should have been the finish. The suicide dive into the chair shot. <laughs> Chris Benoit falling off the ladder, bouncing off the ropes to the outside. Jericho, Benoit, Guerrero, RBD, Edge, Christian, all of these men cemented their place in mid-card legend with intercontinental ladder matches. Honestly, the only top guy from WWE's mid-card back then who never fought for the dangling strap was Kurt Angle. Seems mad. That's crazy when you think about contest, it. This one is the best. Spectacular without sacrificing technical skill. Brutal without spilling a drop of blood. It's an absolute clinic in how no one could touch WWE in early 2001. Number three, Gunter versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus, WrestleMania 39. Gunter is my... This was good. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> this was... Oof. This was fantastic. This was... This was... Yeah, bro, this was fantastic. This was a real good match. Favorite thing, and I feel confident saying that Murder Accountant has not had a bad match in WWE yet. Actually, nope. wait, remember that Survivor Series match where they eliminated him immediately for no reason? Ah. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that one. Let's not even bring that one up that to this day. I was like, oh, no, he's done. But thank goodness that wasn't the case. Let's not bring that up. Hell. And I'm not going to lie. I could have done without Titus O'Neil on commentary. For, for sure. Repeatedly screaming for someone to call the police. And also the repeated adverts for hard lemonade. But otherwise, this is about as good a hoss fight as you can get. Three men who satisfy three very different daddy kinks beating the brakes off each other for our viewing pleasure. And it's just as messy and violent as any decent psychopath yep. could desire. The little micro match between Drew and Gunther as well. It's just leathering each other with chops. It's so exciting. <laughs> Exciting. It gets a little mini standing ovation, and it's a very exciting little preview for what's sure to be a mm -hmm. five star affair at SummerSlam. Great little subplot of Drew and Sheamus' deteriorating friendship as well. It's just mm -hmm. so good. And it's genuinely lovely to hear Michael Cole giggling on commentary at the sheer amount of absurd, fun, nightmare, slap happy stuff happening on screen. Number Back. two, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens versus Cesaro versus The Miz Extreme Rules 2016. Oh. I feel like I'm going to get attacked for putting this above the WrestleMania 39 match, but hot damn, I just rewatched it. It's up there for being one of my favorite matches as ever it's just got all my top lads in it cesaro is amazing sammy and kevin not only great themselves but have a bloody brilliant story going on and i don't care what luke says i love this era of the miz i've waxed poetic about this match before in our list of best fatal four ways of all time watch that list and send me presents but it bears <laughs> repeating this is a match with not only a beautiful pace a sense of spectacle and I'm an emotional go back core and of sammy and kev one. there's also a really fun joke at the heart of it what would happen if the most sports entertainment man to ever exist crashed a ring of honor wrestling match with all three roh alumni putting each other through hell and miz repeatedly sneaking in to pick up the scraps i made it clear my favorite matches of the year list watch presents that i love multi-man matches with a lot of silly moving parts and this is a shining example of that and a brilliant example of what the ic title belt can do shine a huge spotlight on an extremely talented mid card and number one, Gunther versus Sheamus, Clash at the Castle 2022. Well, as much fun as a good multi-man can be, you got to love a really good singles match for the Intercontinental title. What? Nothing more maximum effort than two mid- I didn't think it was, I wasn't sure if it was going to be number one. I thought he was going to probably have it like maybe number two or number three, but you know what? I can't blame him. Card guy's really going for it for the IC. And this is probably the best example of that, maybe ever Sheamus rejuvenated his whole career in yeah. one match Imperium got back together and Gunther truly arrived on the main roster all wrapped up in pure so five-star violence from the moment Giovanni Vinci appeared to the really fun faction chaos as Gunther and Sheamus stare yep. each other down to the 20 minutes of brutality that followed the match was so good it created an instantly iconic pairing so much so that they immediately ran it back at the Royal Rumble not only was the match supremely violent there was also tight psychology in the target yeah. of Seamus' back, hat played into the finish, plus the overjoyed UK fan showing Seamus the kind of love he hadn't received in mm -hmm. so very long. I had a blast watching it in Gunther's matches. I just like that. They leave you giddy with how much punishment everyone's taking in front of you. Yeah. Long may he reign. And that's it. What's your favorite Intercontinental title match? Facts, man. Facts. I, I cannot disagree with him having that as his number one, as one of the best Intercontinental matches I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> it is so good of a match, bro. Five stars. It's not even honestly. 
honestly, if Drew, if it if it wasn't for Drew versus Roman Reigns and how good that was at Clash at the Castle, that probably would have been match of the night. Honestly, people still consider this match of the night and then the main event a close second. You really can interchange them. Like that that match was so good, so fantastic, and it just shows that right now gunther is making that title seem so damn important and i appreciate it as it should he has brought prestige back to the intercontinental championship and i love it so comment down below let me know what's your favorite intercontinental championship match of all time man if it wasn't on this list already but i appreciate all the love support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k now i'm still young to be the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace